There we go. The webinar is being recorded. Okay. All right. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's Buildings and Facilities meeting. It's Tuesday, September 17th. Uh, and we are recording. Um, so when I um, call your name, can you please unmute and uh, just say yes so I know that we can hear you and um, you can hear us. Um, Tammy? Yes. Uh, George? Yes. Sharon? Here. And I am here. All right. Our first... Uh, uh, item on our agenda is the minutes. Can someone move to approve the minutes of July 16th, please? Um, motion to approve. Second. You're muted, Tammy. Sorry, I'll second. Oh, okay, thank you. And any changes? No. No comments? No, nothing? Okay. Thank you for doing the minutes, Tammy. Um, You're welcome. Not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> but these were these were really very thorough. So, um, okay. so let's go around and approve them, Tammy. I approve. George. Approve. And I approve. Okay. Next is public comment. Um, do we have. We have one attendee. Um, if you would like to make comment, please raise your hand so we can let you into the room. Mm. Nope. Okay. No public comment. Uh, let's move on to monthly building and grounds report. George. Uh, so I really have nothing new to report. Uh, just a couple of very minor things that we'll be scheduling the changeover to heating. Uh, the end of the month, we've had an exceptionally warm September, so I've kind of held off a little bit. Um, but next week is looks to be a little cooler. So we'll schedule that for the end of the month. Um, there were a couple of items at the last state boiler inspection that were out of compliance and we had those repairs made. Uh, they were all fairly minor ones, but uh, they are back in compliance and we just got the certificate. So we're good to go on that, uh, on that vein. So I think that's really all I have to report at this point. Oh, wow. So um, air conditioning has been okay throughout the building. It's been okay. I mean, the really hot days, you know, there's still parts of the building that aren't really air conditioned, but um, we've been using fans as a supplement. Um, so it's, it's, it's been tolerable. You know, we had, we had quite a hot summer at the beginning of the summer, uh, but things have kind of calmed down. Welcome to New yeah. England. So uh, it's, it's been tolerable. Yeah. So we've had yeah. limited, we've had limited breakdowns. Oh, good. And leaks? I mean, we haven't had that much rain recently. No, no, we haven't. There's really been nothing new as far as leaks go. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we had that one, um, the one HVAC leak with special collections that we had talked about. Yeah. I believe that was back in June. Uh, but there's been nothing else on that front. And the roof is... There's been nothing new as far as leaks go. It's just the usual suspects. George, I, I don't, did we report to buildings and facilities? I'm not sure that we did. The elevator flooding? Yes. We yes. talked about it in this meeting. Okay, great. Yeah. Yes, we Wait. did. Yeah, the elevator and no. I know it, we talked was... about it. I'm just not sure which committee we talked about it then. Yeah. You know what? Maybe we mentioned it here, but I know we discussed it in the trustees meeting. Yeah, I mean, I can just do a brief review. I, I forget when the date was, but um, the large elevator had shut itself off uh, and we found that the elevator mechanical room uh, was flooded with water and the, the source of the water was just groundwater had leaked into the elevator shaft because it's a low point in the building. Uh, it's a very rare occasion that it happens. Uh, typically, it happens in spring if we have a really heavy snowfall season. But uh, for some reason, this was back when we were having some really heavy rainy 
uh, long rainy periods and uh, it flooded. And of course that triggered the mechanicals to shut down. Uh, so we drained that, we dried it all out. They came and they serviced the elevator and everything was back in operation. Is that the elevator day. in the in the back of the library? Correct, the larger the big one. elevator? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And that one has newer mechanicals because it was renovated within the last 10 years, I believe. And because so it, it was... goes to the basement, that's where the water would come in? Yeah, plus it's, you know, it. it's towards the back of the building. So yeah. it's at a much lower point. And, you know, there's a lot of clay on our property. And like I said, it's very rare that it happens. It's not a regular occurrence, but, um, you know, so it kind of caught us off guard because it very rarely, if ever, has happened during the summer. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's all, it was all dried out and the elevator tech gave it its blessing and it was back in operation within a day. The other thing that I had written down in my notes that I don't think we talked about in buildings and facilities was the tree that had oh, large yeah. branches falling down on, yeah. on a couple of instances. <laughs> yeah, the 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 tree that is closest to the CVS building, uh, it it's kind of next to the shed and right in front of the CVS building. Uh, there were two occasions where it dropped very large branches. Uh, and it wasn't really due to high winds or anything like that. We weren't having bad storms on both occasions. One of them, uh, the larger of the incidents, uh, they both landed on the roof of the shed, but the first one also landed on the cooling tower. Uh, mm -hmm. And we were concerned that there was gonna be heavy damage with that, but there was only very minor damage uh, to the cooling tower. Uh, so it didn't affect its operation. But in both instances, we had to call the town tree warden and have the branches removed because they were much too large for us to handle in house. Uh, and again, they were both, you know, they were just both rotten branches that that came down from a really high point in the tree. I guess the first one was witnessed by a couple of construction workers who were on the CVS property and they came running over because they saw it happen and it was they thought the whole tree was coming down but um but yeah those were i mean thankfully it, it, it's an area that's not close to a sidewalk uh there were no nobody was injured and there was no real heavy damage to anything but definitely worth pointing out mm. uh, that that happened and like i said the town tree warden alan snow took care of it yeah he's so great yes his yes. next day he was quick where where is the cooling tower? Is that it's on behind, the? It's behind the shed, so it's it's between oh, okay. the shed and the uh, the CVS, CVS building. It's, okay. It's not readily visible. It's surrounded with a chain link fence. Um, <clears throat> you can barely see it through the back, you know, over the back of the shed. Okay, so that's all taken. Yeah, I think we just. I think you had mentioned these at the trustees meeting, Sharon, yeah. okay. last month because we didn't meet buildings and facilities. Okay. But uh, and then the only other thing that I had on my list was the vaping, which really isn't a, a buildings and grounds report. It's just the the need for us to do something in the in the basement. Um, there's a lot of vaping going on, and um, it, it it's impossible to prevent really the way the way there's no oversight of the basement. I was going to bring that up because we discussed that in our Jedi meeting, I remember. And I think I had a couple of questions. One was, I mean, we, I mean, our next, next topic is the backup building project. So I think this is the right time. Um, I think what I want, well, I had a couple of questions. One, and what was interesting was that Mia had mentioned it and it was a day after we got a, a message from the principal it was like you know first few weeks of high school and he had mentioned that there was uh like more incidents of kids oh. vaping in you know when they were supposed to be in flex flex block or whatever and just whatever the ground rules were and so two questions i know i i got the impression that this was mainly teens right i mean that was I think mainly, but not only. Yeah. Okay. So the whole thing is about sight lines and more 
I mean, it's the whole building. But the other thing is, I was just, well, when we were talking about the air conditioning, so I've been spending a lot of time working at the library. And I have to say, there have been times when I've been in the the quiet section, you know, the back room behind AV, and it's been really cold. <laughs> so so then I will go downstairs just to for a bit or whatever. But I have to say that it has also been really crowded, you know? Like during the day, I think maybe partly because the college students are back. And then at around three o'clock or two, 250 when the schools let out because some of the kids are coming. And the one thing that it made me do two, a couple of things. Well, I was just thinking how the the heating and cooling is off upstairs and downstairs. And the other thing was the space and how much we need the space, because even though a lot of kids, you know, my teen says, oh, I don't go to the library to hang out. But the teens are teens are coming in there. And at three o'clock, it's no, it starts, you know, the noise level goes up and it's because, and I think it's great because they come in and they look around and they're kind of annoyed that there isn't enough space to sit. And um, all that to say is um, we really do need more space, but I don't know what we can do in terms of the vaping for right now. Like you have a policy I mean, it's not like you can in, you're going to install cameras or like what can and there are cameras do? down there. You know, okay. they don't care. It, it's it's all about. Yeah, I mean, there needs to be a, a constant presence. And right now yeah. we only see it when we like do a walkthrough kind of a thing. And not all staff can can do walkthroughs because most staff are manning desks. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, there's so definitely signage all over the place about it, but. If yeah. they're going to do it, they're going to do it. They're going to ignore the signage. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like in school, you know, there's like a warning, yeah. then a suspension. You Like, is there yeah. something you can do at the library? But this is a community center, so you can't really do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm not sure, like, I'm, I'm not sure that the vaping smells carry it it's more about the marijuana smells that are that are carrying like up to the kids room because right. that's where the you know from the basement up into the yeah. and that's kind of that's not nice no 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 so there is no solution to this problem besides if we you know if the building were different and sight lines and all of that all right yeah. yeah um Tammy any questions comments no all right so backup building project planning can we talk a little bit about the um the five-year capital plan that was attached to our agenda and where we are yeah, so I think, so the last time we spoke, uh, George uh, was reaching out to Holly um, to get more information on the um, uh, HPR. I don't know why that's in my head. I've, I've just got acronyms floating. Uh, uh-huh. Going out to- What is to HPR? No, that's not the acronym that I want. RFP. Uh, RFP. RFP, thank you. Those yeah. other letters. Um, yeah, so George, talk about that. <laughs> yeah, um, unfortunately, I have not heard back from, from Town Hall in regards to that. But basically, I was looking for clarification that if we started, uh, you know, as, as we know, we, we're, we are the library, the trustees are putting up money for Plan B for, you know, to begin capital projects. But if we had something that the town had to take over because we didn't have enough funds, what would that look like? Should we do a should we do town contracts? Should we do our own contracts? Uh, should it all be under a town contract? And I was asking questions like that because I wanted to make sure that we did the process correctly. You know, if the RFP has to come from the town or if we do our own RFPs, uh, it, it's just a tricky thing because we have a finite amount of money that we're going to spend and the rest will have to come from the town. So trying to just think ahead, I wanted to get those answers answers those questions answered it's it's early um get those questions yeah. answered from the town as to what 
what proper steps we should be taking. Uh, and I have not heard back on that yet. And I, I feel like uh, uh, I feel like we should go through we should probably go through the town I kind of it. like what we're doing this summer with the building project bills. The benefit of that is. So the town pays the bills, we reimburse the we the library reimburses the town. What would be helpful with this is because we are going to reimburse the town up to 1.8 million and then after that then the town funds can kick in and all the proper processes and paperwork would be in place already and so Holly would just take the funds from a different account. Um, that's that's my feeling too because we don't we don't have the library itself, we do have a two page contract, but it's only good for a certain amount of money. So we would literally have to develop new contracts and things like that. And I just feel like it's better off if we just gave that money, put that money in an account that's a town managed and yeah. just use town contracts. It'll just give us it'll also give us more protection. And I just yeah. I just think it'd be the smarter way to go. Yeah. George, what is sorry, what is this two page contract? It's say if we if we uh it it really works for anything. Say if we had, if we were having a small repair or a building thing done, uh, and we were paying for it with, uh, with our own library funds, you know, uh, mm -hmm. either either out of the budget or out of the endowment. Uh, it it's what is used to pay, uh, teachers and performers when when people come in and do seminars, things like that. It's for smaller, you know, it's for in house things like that. Okay. It's not for major. It's not for major purchases or repairs. Okay. Uh, it's just a simple two page contract. I think, I believe the dollar figure is less than $10,000. Okay. If I'm correct, but don't quote me on that. It's been a while since we've had to use one. So let me understand who, who's, <laughs> um, you were talking about Holly, then you said Tom. Who's Tom? Did you say Tom? Mm -hmm. You mentioned someone besides. Oh, it's a town. Town. Oh, town. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. All right. Um, so, so for the RFP, you have sent out your questions and you have not heard back from the town. Correct. And that is the first step for plan B, should the bids not come in under budget, right? Correct. Okay. So, what can we what can we as a committee do to like make sure that that happens so that we're on track should the project not go through yeah i don't think we're going to i don't think you'll have to worry about it um yeah. just okay. you know getting a, getting a hold of holly you know she's had to Town just hired a, a new, right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Town just hired a new finance director, and and it's been a switch over to a new fiscal year. So um, okay, yeah, I feel like if the project doesn't go forward, there'll be you know we'll be having meetings with Paul and right uh, away and right. all the players. I think so. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and I think that all that stuff is just it's going to happen. Um, okay, it's just right now where everything is so up in the air. Yeah, so um. Also in terms of the backup plan. So the first step is still a feasibility study, right? Or is it like having the 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 architects um give us another estimate? Or is the, the feasibility study is first and then the architects? Correct. Yes. Correct. Sharon. I, I'm sorry. I was wait. I, I was just gonna let George go on this. Yeah. So so yeah. we would do the uh, the RFP for the HVAC replacement. That's so that's mm -hmm. one process. At the same time, uh, is when we would go out to bid to hire actual contractors to replace the fire alert system and to do the abatement in the kids' room. Does that make sense? So all three of those things would be happening at the same time. Right. Yeah. And do we have, like, is this going to be the same situation where we go out to bid for contractors and then what if they're over budget? But this is something a little more simple than the project where there's all, where there are all these features with the historic elements of the building and the 
green elements of the building project. I like would that is that is something simple that we don't have to worry about contractors not coming under budget within budget. Well, we're not we're not putting a project out to bid. It's actually the reverse. We're not saying, hey, contractors, this is how much money we have. Right. So bid. It, it's kind of the reverse. We're saying this is the project we need. You right. all are going to tell us how much it's going to cost. And then we choose the lowest bidder. Okay. So we, we will tell them what we need, you know, take all the asbestos out of the kid's room. Right. And, and then we'll get three responses from three different contractors. Right. And then typically, that's what... typically on those, typically on projects like that, you know, we hire an architect, the architect finalizes all the paperwork for the contractors to bid on and the architects uh, do the bid opening with the town and the low bid is chosen right. if they meet all the qualifications. And the architect would be Kuhn Riddle? We would have to hire an architect. We Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, okay, so, but that is just for these three things. So, and then in terms of funding, and then we go to JCPC in February. For the following year, this is where it's going to get complicated between, yeah. you know, R1.8 and when that ends. And, um, but yeah, right. we'll want to go to JCPC to keep them, you know, in the loop. So even if we aren't asking for money from them, they're going to want to know where we are in the process. Right. But the, okay. And, um, and then that means that nothing, no work could really start till later next year. Uh, at least, uh, at least a year, maybe two. For just for the basics, just eight. Yeah. Okay. You don't think the fire alert system could get done? I feel like that could be done possibly relatively in quickly. A year. Yeah, possibly in a year. Um, it's know, funny. To me now, a year is quick. The building project, 13 years, that's not quick. So it, it, right. like, yeah. the definition of quick is all relative. Yeah. Yeah, it won't happen overnight. Uh, no. But I yeah, think no, it could no. get done I mean, during FY25. Yeah. But we would get started. Yes. I mean, the process is so maybe end of FY25, early 26. Uh, yeah. So the actual work that I believe could get done would be the fire alert system and sprinkler replacement mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. ch children's room abatement. That work could get done. Um, Next actually, year, in FY25. In FY25. And so the feasibility study for the HVAC replacement, I also think that could get done during FY25. Doesn't mean um, the replacement of the HVAC system would happen during FY25. Okay. We could just get the feasibility study that says, you know, from an architect has drawn it all up. This is the new system we want. Then we'd be able to go out to bid the following fiscal year. Okay. And then, so that would just be these three things following fiscal year. So looking into FY26. And then what would be the next items that could be tackled under plan B? Yeah, so uh, in FY26, again, if, if everything goes really smoothly in the town chooses to fund it, that's when we could get the HVAC replaced. So we would be, um, you know, following through with the feasibility study. Uh, and then we would also, we would begin another feasibility study for the replacement of the atrium and the roof. So we're looking into FY27, 28. Mm -hmm. Well, that's FY26 work and then FY27 work would be the actual replacement of the atrium and the roof. Right. And then replacing the windows, that could be a separate project. And again, you know, the further we get out, the more, you know, the more hypothetical we get. Yeah, and then that would require for the HVAC and the fire sprinkler, that would require interim location, right? Would it? 
for possibly. replacing the HVAC. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. I the sprinkler, the children's room asbestos, that would require, or is that something they can do? The asbestos, I think we could just close for right. a time period. I don't I don't know how long that that work would take. Okay. Um, but the the fire alert and the sprinkler replacement, again, I don't know if that would just be a closure okay. for a period of time. Yeah. Seems to me. Yeah, I feel like it wouldn't take so long that we would be looking at temporary space. Okay. Yeah. And, um, um, so that may be doubling up on the branches and just closing the building while that work is happening. And a so lot of it could happen while the building is open. I mean, replacing the fire panel and stuff like that. But right. we also have to look at safety. So, I mean, if there is no fire system. In right. They're like, if, if they pull all the equipment out, there's really no fire safety. We really can't be open. So we would also have to look at that and how long that would take. Okay. So in any of these processes, um, staff would um some staff would move to the branches and the branches hours would be extended significantly yeah. Yeah. for whatever time that the main building is closed okay yeah, yeah. that makes sense and then so i guess some programs could be done maybe um in other places in town in addition to the of course we have good space in both branches now yeah. okay um, the reason I uh, was asking about interim locations was remember um, when we were looking at plants, the various options a few months ago, you know, from 2017, like a couple of them had relocation. So what parts of, of plan B would require that? I would say the HVAC and the atrium for sure. Okay, so they definitely, would... yeah, um, and it's also you know we wouldn't be it wouldn't be like like the building project we wouldn't be emptying the whole building out. We right. would probably be just looking for a satellite location with a minimum amount of square footage just to have some operate some basic operations. Okay, uh, okay, because it wouldn't be a long term. Although with the atrium roof, I, I really can't predict how long that would be, uh, yeah. but we wouldn't be emptying the building. Uh, so we wouldn't be looking for as much square footage as we are with the building project. So the cost will be less, um, but we'd still be looking at, you know, a lot of the same criteria of location, accessibility, and things like that. Right. So, I but that would that... still be twice, right? So, sorry, Tammy. Yeah. No, yeah. I was yeah. just going to say that the disruption to staff and services over the time of Plan B, to me, is is more difficult to anticipate mm. and very problematic um, as opposed yeah. to the project where you move everything once and it yeah. all gets fixed and then you move back. Um, there's right. going to be a lot of shuffling back and forth um, of people and some materials and holds and uh, all kinds of things for, you know, a smaller period of time, but repeated many times. Um, and yeah. I think that that, that the incon it's not even an inconvenience, it's a disruption of services is going yeah. to um, happen over and over and over again over the 10 years or so that um, Plan B is projected to take. So it's, it's not on the paper with what what um, things need to be done, but it needs to be taken into account. Yeah, and also um, all this depends on funding as well, right? Because the town is going to have to fund it after the 1.8 million. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, hopefully there, they'll, go ahead. There, you know, there's, there, there are some things on here that we might be able to get like historic preservation funds like the slate roof itself uh there may be some other things in there that we might be able to like get money from two different pods from both both jcpc and, and historic preservation but um you know we'll also have to look at that i mean over time we're looking at um 15 to 20 million dollars over over 
the 10 year process. And there's been suggestions of it's only going to cost three to 5 million. And that's just ludicrous. Um, I yeah. think people need to be realistic about what it's going to cost over time. It's not um, a small amount of money. It's a significant increase to the town for library costs. And and Tammy, the fifteen to twenty million is inflate like taking into inflation today, right? I mean, we're now looking into twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. Oh yeah, you're going yeah. forward. If it's ten years, you're looking at twenty, thirty something. So yeah, and it's going to take a long time. And um, there's no way the state would give us anything for this, right? Because, yeah, I mean, if I would, yeah. Okay. So, um, so can I, I just had, I had a couple of questions about when I was looking at the five-year capital plan. There's an item like three quarters of the way down the first page, landscaping. Is mm. that part of plan B? Like, what do we mean by landscaping? Yeah, we got to redo, redo the landscaping no, around no. the entire building. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, the yeah, front I mean, sides. You know, things are growing. There's a lot of over overgrowth. Uh, a lot of items were removed and donated to the Kestrel. Right. Uh, I mean, the holes have been filled, but it's certainly not attractive. Uh, right. Plus, you know, at the very minimum, at some point, the driveway is going to be need to be repaved as well as the rear uh, walkways because uh, you're that's the still '90s asphalt back there, and you know, it's things are starting to become a tripping hazard, and the driveway is in rough shape. It's awful. Uh, the The tree that's growing into the sewer the line tree. that's got to come down, and the sewer yeah. line's got to be fixed. Yeah, replaced. Yeah. Is that the big tree in the back, like that? It's one of them. Yeah. yeah, I believe it's the closest one to the building, if I'm correct. I yeah. think so, too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, you know, when we were talking about sight lines interior, um, so can I ask, like, you know, in the past when uh, I remember this from when Sophia was a kid and they would run around in the back and pick up needles and stuff. Is all of that still going on back there? So would landscaping involve doing something about opening up some mm -hmm. of that? Because that is really not safe for kids or anyone. And yeah. 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 No, we we still regularly find paraphernalia, uh, alcohol bottles, things like that, people sleeping uh, overnight. So yeah, definitely clearing things up a bit and helping with the sidelines is definitely part of that plan. Okay. Thank you. Um, Tammy, do, do you have any questions about the what was in our packet? No. I mean, obviously, um, there are no amounts of money here. It's just place names, things that will need to be done. Um, so I think it's good to have that list. But obviously, we don't have estimates for what it will cost yet. No. So that's part of plan B to get those costs, the feasibility study. Um, and in terms of the project, Sharon, um, so are we still going out just for, just to get, get an idea of where we can be with plan B, keeping the project in mind? Are we still going out to bid in a few weeks? On the 25th. Oh, we are. Okay. Yeah wasn't sure about that okay that's yeah. good to know yep and Aaron, how long do they have to return the bids till the 31st halloween <laughs> oh, wait a minute the 25th of september you said. correct and then they have until until october 31st 30, correct okay and this would be all in keeping with the 106 process yeah oh, yeah okay Okay, so, okay. D does anyone know if the school the school project bids have come in? I, I think, think they come in on Thursday. 
okay would be interesting to see i mean that is a simpler project but i think I mean, there's a school costing a whole lot more than it would have cost us 10 years ago so there's that yeah um, i think there's a school building committee meeting on friday uh, that oh, we'll okay. talk talk about okay. the builds okay yeah. all right um I'm looking forward to the block party this week. Yes. yes. Are you going to be there or is this one of your? I cannot be there. Oh. But the, the library staff yeah. are going to be there. The Friends Capital Campaign. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I will miss it, unfortunately. I'm oh, gonna... I will I'm spend flying on Thursday. Time. Yeah. It's always. I didn't fun... know when it was. So yeah. we, we had to make plans based on. Um, my son and his family yeah and the fact that I don't have meetings the you know <laughs> the latter part of the month so that's when I can go away perfect yeah that's good all right any all right. any other topics um I could just oh. wanted to bring up briefly the old library van uh just sold last night it was uh, put on a uh, auction site that uh, a lot of municipalities use. It's a little tricky because technically it's a town-owned vehicle. So the town is in charge of like listing and the transfer, but I've been pretty heavily involved in it and we're trying to determine who signs the title now that it's been sold. Uh, so that's in process, but it did sell for... Um, What's that dollar figure? It sold for one thousand five hundred and twenty-six dollars. Uh, that fund, those mon, those funds do go directly to the town because it was purchased with town funds. So we won't yeah. see any of that. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know exactly which town fund it goes to. I believe it goes into the general fund. Uh, do but we have a new library van? Yes. Yes. Oh, good. Yes, we got the. We got. Oh yeah, welcome back to BNF Tanny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. Yeah, we got the library van in January, um, and it has been absolutely wonderful and flawless, and it's really cool driving one of the first uh, fully electric utility vehicles in town. I believe the town maintenance department is looking into getting one as well now. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been really neat, and it's been and trouble-free, uh, and just a breath of fresh air to know that my staff have a safe vehicle to do deliveries and that's great so, so yeah. that was through jcpc right the yes the van yeah correct. so th correct. this also belongs to the town correct yeah. yes it does correct. yeah so when you say auction george like doesn't it just get sold by whoever like can someone use this is this going to be is it usable the old van uh well i mean it, it should be usable with repairs uh okay. the the government site it's not a government site the the site pretty much exclusively sells government surplus vehicles uh okay. that are anywhere from just something that's aged out that's perfectly usable to to things that are just usable for parts and it's not just vehicles it's tractors lawnmowers things like that it's basically anything that's government surplus uh they take a percentage of it off the top um but yeah it's 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 a very it makes for a very easy and seamless process right. and following with the town guidelines for dia session so right. yeah currently it's currently it's not necessarily legal to drive on the streets the way it is but mm -hmm. that's up to the owner they know that they're purchasing it needing repairs right well i'm glad you guys are driving safely where is that parked uh, it's it? currently on the back row of the CVS lot. Uh, we have okay. permits for a few spaces back there because we don't okay. have anywhere to put it right now. So that, that's where it's currently living. Right. Okay. All right. Um, anything else? No? Okay. Tammy, have a great trip. Send us photos. Uh, at 11 o'clock, there's a naturalization ceremony. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. That's right. Are you going? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can oh. walk. Hey, maybe I, I find them inspiring. Yes. Um, so. Can I tell a really quick story? So um, 
like 2011, 2012, I think, so was when Sofia became a citizen. And we at back then you could there was nothing around here. So we had to go to Lemonster or somewhere out there. But I have to say it was really cute because she was the youngest uh, new citizen. And when she went, well, I had to go up with her. She got a standing ovation, like people like <laughs> it was it was just so That's sweet. Great. And like I had done it like 10 years before that or 2009 in New York. And I remember that was all like New York is an amazing place to become a U.S. citizen. Anyways, it was really sweet. And if I can make it, I might run over to Munson too. My my daughter-in-law who lives in the DC area had to go to Baltimore for some oh, reason yeah, yeah. They for her naturalization they ceremony. Not in DC. There was <laughs> no, nothing in DC. No. They had to go what to was Baltimore. This, was that during the Trump years? Uh possibly. Uh I don't think so, but I'm not sure. Okay. I don't remember. I don't remember the date. But yeah, I I, I find it inspiring. So I'm definitely gonna go. All yeah. right. I hope to see you guys there. Okay. Okay, bye. This meeting's here and thank you. Thank you. Yeah.